Yesterday's dramatic SAS-led rescue of British diplomats from war-torn Khartoum raises new concerns for UK people still imprisoned in the capital of Sudan. Foreign office employees and their families were led to safety, but terrified Britons holed up in the capital were advised to call a hotline for updates while street fighting raged around them. A group of elite British assassins was left behind when US special forces arrived in the capital of Wart Orn, Sudan on Saturday night. In a SAS-led operation, Rishi Sunak called complex and rapid, more than 100 UK special forces soldiers were sent to Sudan. Paratroopers and Marines joined them. Over 1,000 to 100 British military soldiers soldiers were active in Sudan, neighboring African nations, Middle Eastern governments, and Britain. When the SAS men arrived, they took control of several local cars and entered the city. In a region of Khartoum wedged between two rival factions fighting for control of the capital, they searched for about two dozen British diplomats and their families hiding out. The site, which was close to the conflict's center, proved difficult for the forces to get there, and it was anticipated that if the battle got too severe, more troops and planes would be needed as support. Despite this, the crew was able to take the party of about 30 individuals, including children, to a convoy north of Khartoum. The convoy then drove the passengers past many checkpoints and 18 kilometers to the Wadi Sidna airstrip. The evacuees, including small children, were taken to an airstrip outside the city by highly armed SAS forces as gunfire and explosions reverberated across central Khartoum. From there, there, early yesterday, a flight to safety was organized for the British embassy workers and their dependents. They boarded to Royal Air Force transport aircraft and a 400m Atlas and a Hercules, which had just flown in from a British military station in Cyprus after the British troops had touched down. Hundreds of other British citizens in Khartoum are facing an unclear future. Many have complained that they feel abandoned after being advised to find refuge by the government while embassy personnel was rescued. According to The Telegraph, Ireland has stated that it will be evacuating its citizens. Rosen Ahmed, a British Sudanese writer, told Sky News that she spent six hours hiding beneath a bed because her neighborhood had recently been shelled to shreds. If there is no strategy to free me, please explain why. Regarding our evacuation, we have not heard anything. Only God's mercy and the support of my family have kept me alive. Rogue troops are raiding the streets. We are so afraid that we are completely numb. The British soldiers undertook a difficult mission, according to Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, who praised their valiant efforts today. He tweeted that a significant rise in violence and threats against embassy workers led to a complicated and quick evacuation of British diplomats and their families from Sudan. I commend our diplomats' dedication and the courage of the military forces who carried out this risky action. There have been cautions that evacuating the estimated 100 British people in Sudan will be challenging because of a violent rebellion in the city and significant airport damage in Khartoum. Mr. Sunak and Foreign Secretary James Cleverly declared that the UK would keep serving as a middleman for a peace agreement in Sudan. Mr. Cleverly has cautioned that while combat between the two warring factions continues, the UK is severely limited in its assistance to besieged citizens. According to Sir William Patey, a former UK ambassador to Sudan, evacuating people without an assurance of safe passage may be disastrous and was a much more complex operation than removing diplomats. The chair of the Foreign Affairs Committee, MP Alicia Kearns, called the rescue operations in Sudan the most challenging evacuation that had taken place in any nation in a considerable amount of time. She told Times Radio that everyday acts of violence, sexual assault, and looting were the backdrop against which evacuations were going place. Foreign Secretary Mr. Cleverly defended the evacuation of what is thought to be a relatively small number of diplomats' priority, saying it would enable the UK government to step up efforts to help British people stranded in Sudan. There are still worries for other British citizens who are stranded in Khartoum. While preparations were being made for the departure of diplomatic personnel, some in Sudan claimed that the UK government had abandoned them. In recent days, intense confrontations between rebels with Russian support and government forces have claimed more than 400 lives while injuring thousands more. Last night, while violent street fighting raged on, 
British citizens were forced to hide under their mattresses as powerful explosions shook the city's buildings and lit up the night sky over Khartoum. The country's military and a rival paramilitary group continued to engage in combat as Foreign Secretary James Cleverley acknowledged the UK's options for rescuing those besieged were severely limited. Giles Lever, the UK ambassador to Sudan, stated that authorities would continue working at pace to help these Britons to reassure them. However, grave worries exist that the rebel rapid support forces RSF might attempt to take Britain's prisoner. The RSF has been provided with equipment and training by the Kremlin-funded Russian paramilitary group Wagner. Britons are anticipated to be transported to nearby nations like Egypt while being guarded by SAS as part of the rescue operation for British local nationalisms. The distance traveled might need many days. Additionally, they may be transported to covert sites along the Red Sea coast to be brought to the Saudi port of Jeddah. Because they weren't informed of evacuation preparations, several British citizens in Khartoum have claimed they feel abandoned by their country. To safeguard operational security, these specifics could be concealed, nevertheless. There are reportedly hundreds of British nationals living in Sudan. In a dramatic televised appearance, Rosen Ahmed, a distraught British national of Sudanese descent who had been to the nation ten days earlier to attend her cousin's burial, claimed that her family had spent six hours under their mattresses. The neighborhood has been destroyed, she said. All I heard were explosions, gunshots, shelling, and screaming. On top of that, Renegade troops are roaming the streets of our community and randomly breaking into our homes. I am only still alive because of the strength of my family and the grace of God. But we are so petrified that we've lost all feeling in our bodies. No British nationals are believed to have been hurt in the violence thus far. However, yesterday there were more worries about their safety following reports that a French man was shot while attempting to leave. A French man was hurt as a convoy came under fire from army planes, according to a statement by the RSF, which seeks to overthrow the government of Sudan. Armed forces in Sudan attributed the strike to the RSF. British nationals in the area are urged to register with us, Mr. Cleverly added. Registration has been distributed, and if the need arises, we can find a means to assist them. The U.S. military utilized Chinook helicopters to move dignitaries and their families to safety. Other countries organizing their rescue efforts include Saudi Arabia, Italy, Belgium, Turkey, Japan, and the Netherlands.